Hello, and welcome to NAG for consultation in a virtual setting. I am one of your faculty today. My name is Claire Wilbert. I'm an associate with Bernstein and Associates NAG for consultants. Hi, my name is Jane Richardson, and I'm an associate of Bernstein Associates NAG for consultants. Hi, my name is Sarah O'Donnell. I serve as the NAGPRA coordinator for the Osage Nation's Historic Preservation Office. This training will explore the ways in which meaningful consultation can take part in virtual settings as part of compliance with the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA. Through dialogue, we will provide time-tested strategies for initial outreach and planning, preparation and facilitation, and consultation follow-up. This training will cover the fundamentals of consultation, regardless of the platform, initial outreach and planning for virtual consultation, preparing for virtual consultation, facilitating and participating in virtual consultation, and virtual consultation follow-up. You should always ground your consultation planning and participation in the law and its implementing regulations. Always start by rereading the law and regulations, specifically the sections that refer to consultation to ensure that you are meeting all of the requirements. Consultation is required as part of compliance with NAGPRA's summary provision. Museum and federal agency officials must begin summary consultation no later than the completion of the summary process. And consultation may be initiated with a letter but should be followed up by telephone or face-to-face -face dialogue with the appropriate official. Compliance with NAGPRA's inventory provision also requires consultation. And in this case, museum and federal agency officials must begin inventory consultation as early as possible, but no later in the inventory process than the time at which investigation into the cultural affiliation of human remains and associated funerary objects is being conducted. And again, consultation may be initiated with a letter, but should be followed up by telephone or face-to-face -face dialogue. Additionally, under the current regulations, for the disposition of culturally unidentifiable human remains, the museum or federal agency official must initiate consultation regarding the disposition of culturally unidentifiable human remains and associated funerary objects within 90 days of receiving request from an Indian tribe or Native Hawaiian organization to transfer control of culturally unidentifiable human remains and associated funerary objects, or if no request is received, before any offer to transfer control of culturally unidentifiable human remains and associated funerary objects. Additionally, there are some changes from who you might be consulting with for the inventory and the summary provisions. The museum or federal agency official must initiate consultation with officials and traditional religious leaders of all Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations from whose tribal lands at the time of removal, the human remains and associated funerary objects were removed and from whose Aboriginal land, the human remains and associated funerary objects were removed. An Aboriginal occupation is described and defined in very specific ways. Again, always refer to the Act and its implementing regulations. Before I pass this off to my two co-presenters today, I wanted to briefly review the fundamentals of consultation, regardless of the platform. The first is to always ground your consultation efforts in the requirements of NAGPRA. Always keep in mind what your goal is in consulting. Your goals for summary and inventory provision consultation may be very different. Consultation can also be a wonderful opportunity to share institution-wide goals with tribal communities and partners. Consider your participants. Decision makers should always be at the table. If you have a NAGPRA team, who does the day-to-day -day work, but someone else higher up in your administration is responsible for making cultural affiliation determinations or signing off on notices, they should be present at the table so that tribal requests and needs are met by the individuals responsible for making decisions. And lastly, remember the human. 
we all have needs to get up and stretch our legs, to take breaks. There may also be spiritual needs that should be considered. And on a Zoom platform or another virtual consultation platform, that might mean setting aside breakout rooms for tribal participants or setting aside time at the beginning of a meeting for a traditional opening or some sort of other spiritual preparation that tribes request. For initial outreach and planning, now that you know you need to consult, how do you go about contacting the tribal reps? What we first do is create a consultation invitation letter and we'll send it out via email and mailing it out to the tribal representative's address. We wait about a week from that first communication outreach and I will personally reach out with a phone call to the tribal rep to see if they're interested in consulting. If I don't hear back from them, I'll wait another week and reach out again so that I can at least log that I reached out twice. If I do get a hold of tribal rep and they are interested in consulting, they might want to have more documentation. So I have that ready to send to them while I'm talking to them on the phone. And if they review the documentation and they still want to consult, we'll start the first stage of planning that virtual consultation together. From a tribal representative perspective, that initial uh, letter inviting us to consult is incredibly important. It gives us a uh, starting point to start thinking about consultation in the future and to prioritize a museum or institution's consultation within the wider scope of all of the other NAGPRA consultation that the tribe is having to do. This lets us uh, follow up with you directly or I think more importantly, uh, start prioritizing in terms of our timelines, in terms of our resources. The follow-up, the personal follow-up is an incredibly important aspect as well. One that I, I would highly recommend. Um, as Jane mentioned, following up with a personal phone call is not only a requirement of the regulations if you haven't heard back, but it also gives you an opportunity as a museum to start that collaborative process that we're wanting for consultation. It gives you an opportunity to reach out on a personal level and start establishing a relationship with the tribal representatives that you're going to be consulting with for in the future. What's also very important in terms of next steps as a tribal representative, I'm going to be following up immediately, almost on a staff to staff level about coordinating these meetings if there are any cultural requirements that the tribe I represent is going to be needing to plan around and to take into account, but also to start understanding the scope of the consultation, asking what kind of information that you have available, what kind of documentations are available to share right now, what kind of documentation will be available to share in the future, and then setting up things that are much more mundane like logistics. But all of these things are incredibly important. We want to have a successful consultation. This has to be a collaborative process where we're exchanging ideas about how we're going to get the best results out of our NAGPRA consultation. The NAGPRA consultation, I hope you'll keep in mind, is something that the tribes are getting from many different institutions. So we are receiving many different invitations to consult. So we're going to want to consult with your institution on a museum by museum basis. So we're going to be following up and asking specific questions about what kind of initial outreach and planning we need to plan together. So now that you know that the tribal representative wants to consult, the next step is establishing a meeting date. So you wanna think about whether you prefer to send out a scheduling poll so that you can both choose your best availability or to provide from a pre-selected list of when you're available, or if you prefer, you can set up a reoccurring time and date to consult each month. From the tribal perspective, uh, our calendars tend to fill up very, very quickly. Most tribal representatives have other duties or might have a very robust consultation schedule already. So keep in mind that when proposing dates in your letter uh, of invitation to consult or in your follow up communication, not to expect a meeting date within the next week or so. 
I think it would be a good idea when proposing dates to think on a monthly schedule, a few months in advance. If you are anticipating the need, given your collections that you'll be consulting about, repeated consultations over a long period of time, you could engage in monthly or bi-monthly meetings and set up a schedule with the tribes to give them updates as you move forward through an inventory process, perhaps a collection review process, perhaps you're wanting to digitize relevant information and getting that to the tribes as you're moving through inventory or summary consultation. All of this can be determined through that initial communication about how we're going to conduct virtual consultation. While you're setting up the consultation, you'll want to confirm which video conference software best fits for you and the tribal representatives. Some tribes are only able to use certain software companies such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. So you'll also want to make sure that your institution museum can also access that software. And you'll also want to decide if you're going to record the meeting and before that confirm that that will be okay with the tribal representative. So you'll want to require a recording transcript software such as Otter AI or Trint that can record the whole meeting and you can provide a transcript if needed. You'll also want to think about developing meeting, meeting materials before the consultation. So the types of documents that we typically include um, is an agenda, museum catalogs, inventories, summary documents, draft notices, and also reference materials. And to provide that ahead of time before the consultation so that the tribal representative has enough time to review it and ask any questions or request any additional documentation. Providing this information to the tribes in advance of the meeting can be incredibly important for us. As a tribal representative, I want to know, especially on the agenda, who will be attending the meeting and on the museum side, um, if there are any uh, additional staff that I need on my side to join based now on the staff that I know that will be attending on the museum side of things. And getting that, as Jane mentioned, far enough in advance that we can make those changes together. Other preparations you'll want to consider when playing for virtual consultation include whether cultural items will need to be viewed digitally. So will you need to be, will they need to be brought into an appropriate space? Will you need to tidy up your office or find a space where you can meet without being disturbed while you show these cultural items over Zoom, Google Meets, or Microsoft Teams? So those are just additional things you'll want to consider and provide enough time to set up for that. If you are wanting to digitally conduct a collection review and show cultural items over the camera, this is an aspect that has to be carefully discussed with tribes before it happens. I would very much caution folks to think of this as a secondary or third meeting. The initial consultation very rarely do we want to set up to have any handling of cultural material, especially if this is potentially sensitive NAGPRA qualifying materials. Other preparations to discuss with tribal representatives is if recording that sort of collection review over any sort of virtual platform would be appropriate. Also to keep in mind is preparing for these meetings as if you are meeting with the tribal representatives in person. This is some of the most important and most sensitive discussions that we could be having together. Everyone at the meeting needs to have their camera on unless previously discussed with the tribal representatives. All of these sorts of discussions and preparing for this meeting needs to be considered um, as a highly elevated level of consultation. At no point should anyone be calling in from their car, sitting outside, walking their dogs. Uh, unfortunately, there have been instance, instances where uh, different things have affected the schedule. And since we are working on a virtual platform, occasionally people uh, want to adapt to that. I would caution against that, trying to be as respectful as possible and holding yourself and your surroundings to that standard is incredibly important and will help signal to the tribal representatives that you are taking NAGPRA consultation very seriously. So distributing meeting materials. 
it's always best to share meeting materials well in advance so that everyone has time to review them if desired. Based on the preference of the travel representative, they may want to receive paper copies of everything that will be discussed or to review them digitally. Depending on the amount of documentation, I've shared documents via a shared drive such as Dropbox or Google Drive, but always confirm with the travel representative which method they prefer to receive those documents. Confirming the kind of data transfer is incredibly important. This is all very sensitive information. Oftentimes, tribal representatives are working for tribal governments and therefore are confined to that government's specific IT standards and regulations. Occasionally, a web hosted uh, file transfer website isn't accessible to tribal representatives. So anticipate when you're planning early on for that consultation, discussing with tribal representatives, if mailing that kind of information is appropriate, if providing digitally is appropriate, or if there is going to be uh, some sort of mixture of the two. But please keep in mind that all of the tribes have their own requirements when it comes to IT infrastructure and file sharing. Preparing for virtual consultation and preparing for success. For internal preparations for consultation, you should think about what you need to do to ensure your team is well prepared. By planning internally, you want to know if you should develop a run of show for your team to decide on who will be speaking about what. For technology, you should test your consultation platform and make sure that it correctly fits for your needs, such as should you have a waiting room set up? Should you test screen sharing capabilities? If you will be viewing cultural items, have you tested the set, that setup and made sure that will work for everyone? And for participation, you should want to also confirm that everyone on your team is clear about their roles and responsibilities. This can include managing the waiting room and who will be doing that, who will be taking note taking or facilitating screen sharing, and also who will be reaching out to the representatives of maybe a week or a day before to confirm that they're still available to attend the consultation. Planning around sensitive information. Before coming to the table, Consider that sensitive information may be shared and plan how to manage that information. For instance, consultation notes. What format should they take? Will the consultation will be recorded? What will happen to that digital recording? And can documentation be requested through state or federal laws? Remember that not all information needs to be written down and that certain information can be requested by the public through FOIA, which is a Freedom of Information Act. So you want to be mindful if you should redact culturally sensitive information, depending on what the tribal participants want. Because some of the information the tribes may share with you during NAGPRA consultation is some of the most sensitive information their culture, their people, and their history may have, that information is, should not be recorded or should be handled very, very carefully. Discussing with the tribes exactly how you want to record this information internally, how much information is required for NAGPRA compliance in terms of final inventory or notice documents. All of those discussions need to happen very early on. And when recording virtually, the tribes need to be an equal partner in consenting for what kind of information is recorded and what kind of information is shared in future consultations or even internally in, within your museum organization. This discussion of sensitive information is one of the most important priorities that a museum has during their consultation with different tribal representatives. If reviewing collections has been agreed upon by the tribal representative and they want to review your collections or certain items within your collection, you will not take time to prepare for that. So you'll want to consider your hardware and software technological capabilities, your peripherals, and as well as your internet bandwidth so you can avoid any lagging. You'll also want to consider your setup, such as the lighting, the background, if it's a distracting color, and if you need additional help for handling and support while showing the items to the tribal representative on your web camera. Participating in virtual consultation is very different than in-person consultation. We have to keep track of what is moving the process forward in a slightly different way. We need to be focusing on the goals, 
those goals need to be determined in collaboration with tribal representatives. You have to very carefully consider how you're going to be present and engaged and maintaining an open, honest, and sincere relationship with the tribes as you are separated by many miles through virtual consultation. Being respectful and trying to keep in mind that even though we are separate from each other and we're not in the same room, that does not lessen in any way the amount of respect, the amount of seriousness, and the importance of this very, very sensitive topic that we're going to be discussing together. Our goal is repatriation, and NAGPRA is the process that we work through together to get all of this accomplished. Before developing the draft consultation notes, you want to decide beforehand with the tribal representative whether they want you to include a full transcript of the conversation or if you should only include action items, understandings, and agreements. When you develop the notes, send them to the participants for review and incorporate any edits they have. You want to make sure that everyone is in agreement on what was discussed and everything that needs to be followed up on. After you've both agreed on that final version of the notes, you should send them to the meeting participants and invitees. The invitees are the people who you invited but were not able to participate, but from those notes, they'll be able to understand what the next steps forward are. Virtual consultation follow-up. The main section of the consultation notes are your action items or your to-dos. So for those action items, you need to consider what's needed to move the process forward who is responsible for them and will be taking on those tasks, and what's the agreed upon timeline, and make sure that the tribal representative is also in agreement of these action items. Also in the consultation notes, you should describe the next steps. Will another consultation be needed, or what should everyone expect next, such as should there be a finalized inventory and a draft notice of inventory completion, or a draft notice of intent to repatriate that you plan to submit to National NAGPRA? Discuss those timelines, the next steps, to make sure they're agreed upon by both parties. Some final thoughts about NAGPRA virtual consultation. Keep in mind that every consultation is unique. Just as your museum and your collections are unique, every tribe is different. Each tribe is a different government with a different culture, with a different history. So every consultation is always going to stand alone and really be a unique experience for both parties. Consultation is an integral part of NAGPRA implementation. This is a process, and this is not to be considered a single milestone along the way or a check mark on a compliance checklist. NAGPRA is an exchange and NAGPRA is a process. We're all trying to reach the same goal. When utilizing virtual consultation, keep in mind that this is just one option of many. And depending on the collection, depending on the tribal needs, that this might not be the only option available to us. It may not be the most appropriate option available to us. It is through ongoing consultation, through ongoing conversations, that we can determine if and how virtual consultation will be a part of our NAGPRA process and how we can work together to make sure our NAGPRA implementation is successful and that all of us are working collaboratively together to achieve repatriation and do so in the most respectful and most appropriate manner. Thank you so much for joining us today. NAGPRA consultation is an incredibly important responsibility, but by no means is it supposed to be a daunting task. Please feel free to reach out to any of us that were participating in today's trainings.